All righty. Well, welcome in, everybody. We'll go ahead and get rolling. I think we'll have some more people trickle in, hopefully, here as we uh, get started today. Just want to kind of wrap up um, you two in the wedge. Um, in the chat, I dropped a couple different uh, video clips. So if you're somebody that didn't get to see the preview clips, you can pull those up, and we'll go through them here together anyway. Uh, and really just kind of want to apply everything that we've talked about. And since we're a smaller group here to, today, uh, I think we'll just do them all together instead of dividing this out into, into smaller groups and using the breakout room. So I'll get ready to go through that here um, in just a second. So um, get ready to roll here. Um, like I said, I just want to review here out of the gate and then take a look at some of those clips and some application just to make sure that uh, we've got the general concepts um, but before then, I have gotten a few questions as to how exactly can we start to use wedge on the bases in a two-man system. And obviously, we've spent a lot of time with the wedge at second base underneath that multi-crew mechanics. Um, so I just kind of want to take the fundamentals that we've used and at least identify for you before we get going here today, um, just how exactly you can use some of these wedge principles in that two-man system, both on the big diamond and the small diamond. So I'll go ahead and share my screen here with us now and um, go through this I do have a, with us. I do, have a, I do have a quick question. Go ahead, Chad. Will I, will I be able to rewatch all this after it's done? Oh, yeah. Yep. It'll be archived, and I think I usually send those out. So, yeah. I'll, I think I'll, sure. I'll be able to listen mostly, but I'll be – I mean, I'll be able to glance at it every now and then. But For sure. Keep those eyes on the road, Chad. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> All right, so um, just kind of like I said, when I go through and kind of show you where you might be able to use these two-man prints or this wedge concept in a two-man system, and it's pretty limited. Um, for plays at the plate, and we'll get there, obviously as the home plate umpire, you can use the wedge all the time for all those plays at the plate. But as the base umpire, that's kind of where I want to focus here in that two-man system. Um, so if I go ahead and get ready to, to draw a little bit onto the screen here, um, if we think about ourselves in a two-man system, like we typically have to take a B position on the outside right about here. Um, and if you think about it, one way we can get the wedge in a steal play here is just instead of taking this play at second base on like a steal from R1 into second base here, instead of just moving in right here, what I've started to experiment with this season is going right to the arc and then just right working back through here. Because generally, for the most part, the shortstop covers – and in this viewing angle, like we've talked about on the back side there, is generally what we want. So, like, in a, in a two-man on a 60-foot diamond, I think that's probably the only way uh, a base umpire can get a look at the wedge at second base is on that steel play from uh, R1 into second base. Everything else, you got to remember that as the base umpire, your responsibilities are multiple. So, you want to use the working area to allow you to get to different places faster. So, you know, in, in a two-man on a 60-foot diamond, I think this is probably about the only situation I can think about using the wedge at second base here from what we've covered this last week. Um, the other situation here, too, is if we kind of take the reverse of it and we just say that we're working on one, on one of the bigger diamonds and we've got to work traditional B here as well, um, this also gets us a chance to go ahead and work the wedge. And we'll, we'll work on this and we'll see some clips here today, too. But again, on this steel play, Instead of taking the plays back on the back side like we have in that multi-member crew, remember in a two-man on the big diamond, we do have to start inside because we're going to have to cover multiple bases. But then our wedge basically becomes this look right down the grass line. So instead of like stepping up, pivoting in, and turning this way, if we just move right down the grass line through here, and you'll see in one of these video clips, that's where we can get our wedge as well. So when we're talking about taking these fundamentals of, of wedge positioning, and where can they be applied in the two-man? Uh, in a two-man system, definitely at home plate, but probably only by the base umpire on steel plates. Right? Anybody have any questions or anything to add on that concept of where you can integrate the wedge um, as a base umpire in a two-man system? The only the only issue I see with the way that is going to be is if the if the throw is coming from the catcher, you're going to be right in the path of the ball. Well, not, not in terms of the wedge, because you got to remember here, if we work that wedge on uh, from B and this throw comes to us from the catcher, instead of stepping up in here, remember, we're going to step down the grass line through here. So we would we would nah. be out of the way there uh, of that throw. Nah, that's what you're saying. Yep. Yep. Good question. All righty. Um, then without further ado, I'll go ahead and clear this one out. And uh, I want to take a look at some of these clips. And again, just to review a lot of the things that we've uh, taken a look at here over the last couple weeks. And, you know, before we get into these, there's kind of four major segments for us to take a look at. And, you know, we'll all start to talk. So uh, we'll kind of use our, our group here of about 12 as our small group. 
Uh, but what I want to look at when we look at these clips are three things. The first thing I want to take a look at is the initial starting position. So we spent a lot of time looking at that one. I want to try and evaluate the initial starting position. So that's the first kind of evaluative method that I want to share here with us. Um, the second thing then are those wedge fundamentals. So remember, those are the three. Uh, the first of which is that we want to start right behind the fielder receiving the throw. Second thing is that we want to move around the arc, if you remember that concept. And then the third thing, that quiet steps. Okay, those are, that's what takes us into the play. Uh, and those are the fundamentals that we want to go ahead and make sure that we evaluate. So those two things here right out of the gate, initial starting position, and then secondly, the fundamentals of the wedge. And then lastly, let's take a look at their style, mechanics, crisp mechanics, their form, um, timing, and things like that as well. So you put everything together here in one more step, and then we'll go ahead and shut the door on the wedge at second base. And I think if you get the wedge at second base, you're going to get it very easily when we shift gears to other bases too uh, and talk about those in the future. All right, so let me go ahead and get those clips up here for us right now. Uh, share screen. All right, and then I had that up. Let me see where it went. Actually, let me click out of this one here. Sorry about that. I thought I had it up and I must have closed out of it here. Give me one second to go ahead and pull that up. Too much stuff going on. It's basketball videos. We don't want those. Appreciate your patience here. Okay. Oh, there they were. All right. So let me go back here. Okay. So again, we'll just want to go ahead and evaluate these together. And I'll just kind of call out on, on some guys too, if we can get to it as well and see and, and just, you know, kind of talking about things here um, in each of these. So let me go ahead and optimize everything here for us. All righty, and I'll take us out of the equation here. Okay, so um, the first major clip here that I want to, the first major concept that I want to go back through and review are those steel plays. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at here at some of these steel plays on the 60-foot diamond. Remember, three things that we want to do is evaluate, number one, the initial starting position, secondly, the fundamental of the wedge, and then lastly, form and whatnot here too. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Uh, so here is a steel from the East region in their regional tournament. And here we can kind of see where the umpire is at. So let's first go ahead and talk about initial starting position. What do we see here? What do we think about this umpire's initial starting position? Might be too deep. Yep, good. So Sammy says too deep. I agree with him there. What else do we know about the starting position? A little too far outside. Yep, so that's what we mean. Yeah, definitely by too deep. If you take a look here, like this person, this umpire is probably about six feet into the grass. And if you think about how much distance that is to second base, no way are you getting a wedge there. So our initial starting position, way too deep. Now, remember, we can either be in B or C here. And regardless if this umpire started in C, we would probably make the same, uh, I, the same type of evaluation that their starting position is a little too deep. Let's take a look at wedge fundamentals, okay? Do we start behind the fielder? Nope. No. No. Yeah, you're right there. And then would you say that this person gets into the wedge at all? No. No. Not, no. 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 So really all this umpire has done is applied what they know about the two umpire system to the four umpire system. And as we know, we because we have four umpires on the field, that allows us to do some things a little bit differently to get better looks. Now, if we want to see where exactly this umpire should be, you know, we should have worked to the backside and then ultimately what we should have been, and let me go ahead and draw it here for us so we know, is instead of right here where this umpire is, we want, we should be, you know, right about in here. And whether we start in B or C, that's completely up to you, uh, but we want to start closer. And then again, remember, we can find the wedge by taking that outstretched arm right here and going 90 degrees back, and that's where we should see our umpire. All right. Mm. So... Let me clear all those drawings out. So we know that they started too deep. The wedge fundamentals uh, weren't exactly as highlighted in this clip as we may want them to be. Uh, but at the same time, let's go ahead and evaluate at the end of this clip then mechanics and form here. Yeah. Thoughts on timing, mechanics, style, and form on that one? <laughs> Definitely sells the call. So, yeah. Know. I like to punch Get it out. out there and you got no problem with it, with it. No, absolutely not. Style and form is good here. The only thing that I would say here for us, and I understand that the, the, the point here when this umpire points at the, at the uh, play is that 
Um, they are looking specifically for the ball. Um, here, instead of pointing, you know, people talk about timing, and this is probably one of the big things I want to make sure I get out there, is that instead of this point, you know, unless we're selling that the fielder stayed on the base or, yeah, he tagged him there, um, what we should do then here is that we should confirm firm and secure possession with our eyes, not with our hand. So instead of pointing to show that he held on to the ball, we should look to make sure he held on the ball. And right when we start to see voluntary release, that's when we go in to make our call. That's where we get our proper timing from. So I think the timing and things like that is all great here by this umpire. <laughs> Style and form looks really, really good. Um, I would just probably say to clean it up, instead of the pointing on this one, just simply go ahead and check it with your eyes. Proper use of eyes is what gives us then proper timing on this. And the replay will come back through here and it'll show us again just how tough of an angle this is from that deep of a spot. Uh, which is why we want to start to uh, evolve and move away from the two-man mechanics. And we're no longer are we going to apply two-man mechanics and two-man fundamentals on a four- or six-person crew. Okay. Here's one from Williamsport. Take a look here. First step is initial starting position here. And I'll let this one go through because we'll get a wide-angle view on this one that will help us talk about all of them here. All right. So here's our initial starting position. What do we think about his initial starting position here, this umpire? He's in a decent he's starting deep. position. Yep. He's still deep, though. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty tall dude, too. Like, Adam's point mm. is exactly right on. I want you to watch here how many steps he takes here as he starts. So here is step number one. I think he just took step number two. Three, four, five, six. And the ball's – and he's not even on the dirt yet. Like, he's definitely way too deep. So initial starting position, way too deep. What about his alignment in B or C? Uh, he's he's in he's behind I, the fielder. Yep. Thought he was in a good starting spot. Yeah, I did too. Um, some people may want to be a little bit wider, like towards the shortstop, or if they're going to use B a little bit, you know, up the middle, uh, or I'm sorry, towards the second baseman. That's fine. Just as long as you can get to where you know you need to be, and that's behind the fielder. Um, and when he goes down, I think you know when we talk about wedge fundamentals, he's probably right there. Now, at the same time, because he starts so deep, this takes his ability to execute those fundamentals completely out of the equation. So I think one of the major things for us to understand in this, when we talk about uh, quiet steps, and this is all Sammy stuff here, these quiet steps, these are not <laughs> quiet steps, all right? These are still steps getting into position. Quiet steps, and we'll see some, uh, some, some illustrations here a little bit later in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the call today. But as we see here, he is still kind of moving on this, in, in this call. The quiet steps are basically us already in position and adjusting with the play. Here he is moving into position. Does that make sense? Yeah, he could have been – he definitely could have been closer. Yeah. And, and I think he, he is – about as good a look closer. as he could have got from his start position. Say that again, Adam. I have – It's about as good a look as he could have got from, it, from where he started. Yeah. And I, I think the, the lesson is just start closer and then he's, he's fine. All right? He's fine. Again, same deal here on this one uh, with regards to, like, the point. Remember, just use your eyes. Like, instead of pointing at the glove here, just go straight to the eyes. What this, this umpire does, you see his eyes are right on the glove right here. The, the fielder always shows you the ball. Take a look at it, nod, and then bang him out. I like the out call here, too. All right. Let's take a look at some stuff on the big diamond. All right. And remember, when we started today, we talked about applying the two man, con the, the wedge concept on the uh, bases in a two man system. This clip will kind of give us a good idea of this one here, too. So, this is from the 5070 World Series out in uh, Livermore. And here, our second base umpire uh, does a pretty good job, in my, my idea here, of trying to get a really good look here. All right. And we'll see the replay here as well um, of how he does on this one. Initial starting position. What do we think here? Good. Why is it good? Well, it's, um, it, it's, it's uh, shallow enough. It's close enough. Um, I, I, I just think he's in a, a decent position to be in the wedge as it's uh, coming through. About the only thing that you can think of is if you wanted to start outside, right? That would be right. the only – but from an inside starting position, I think it's in a good place. Absolutely. Tony, I agree 100% with you. And remember, on that 90-foot diamond, you've kind of got um, the options to either then start on the inside or start on the outside. And if you want to start on the inside, definitely go to B right along the grass line here. Tony, you've been out on this field. I've been out on this field, too. Um, it's tight in it's there. Close. Um, it, yeah, it's close, but it's uh, because it's close, you get a great view. Yep, absolutely. 
Now, oh, the other thing right. that I think this umpire does a really good job of um, is trying to work that wedge straight down the grass line. So, see, now he starts to try and step a little bit closer towards the middle. You see his steps right now. Let me go ahead and draw on this. His steps right now are like more so towards the middle than they would be down towards the grass line. All right. And if we're down towards the grass line in the next clip, you'll see uh, what I mean by this. You'll get that wedge uh, to go ahead and take a look at here. All right. And then go ahead and clear the drawings from here. But nonetheless, here, I think he does a really good job here of trying to get a, the best look possible on this play. He set. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, can you go back to where he's originally set up? Yep. Just a comment. He, everybody may disagree with me, but just where he's initially set up. Right here? Yep. Okay. If you look at him, if you look at the umpire, if the runner hasn't even ran yet, I, I believe his shoulders are wrong. I believe his right foot should be more toward the pitcher a hair, and I believe his shoulders should be more in line with first and third. He, he has a, in my opinion, a closed look at first base if there was a throw to first base. Now, if you're telling me the runner at first has already ran and he's taken that one step back with the right foot, then I'll accept that. But if that's the way he's starting, I think he's closed to a play at first base. Two things here, John. I, I agree with you in a two-man system because then he would have responsibilities for like possible obstruction or anything there. But I'm using it, yeah, I'm using it for a two crew, Yeah, multi-member crew, there's really nothing for you other than the call at second base. Oh, I, I totally agree. But, but we were talking about a two-man crew. Yep. Right? Yeah, so both, or, yeah, both are really good. So, yeah, if you're going to apply that wedge fundamental as a two-man, yes, be more square to the, uh, uh, to the plate. And then you can take those steps down towards the grass line. And a multi-member crew, yeah. yep, you got yeah, it. Great if, it four, if it was four-man, I have no problem with what he's doing. But yep. if it's a two-man crew, He's got to be turned a little bit. That's yeah, that's all. a great pick out, John. Good job. Uh, but, yeah, I think he does a really good job of, of getting a good look here. Remember, I talked to you about finding the wedge. If you take the outstretched arm of the fielder and go either straight forward or straight back, you should see the umpire. And that's exactly where we see him. So, moving down that grass line, exactly what we want to do. All right. So, I think he does a really good job here, too. Let's talk about style, mechanics, and form here. Good punch out. What do we think about proper use of eyes and timing here? I mean, it might have been a little quick. Might have been, but here, here's the other thing too. I, I don't even think. I mean, we can always say that somebody may be quick or not. What I judge on timing is again, what does the umpire do with the eyes before he makes the call? And like, watch this. So we get the tag, and then watch the umpire's eyes. Where do they go? Where's his eyes right now? Following the glove. Looking yeah. at the glove. Yep. And remember, timing is a function of proper use of eyes. He checked firm and secure possession and then banged him out. I love it. And good job all the way around on this <clears throat> by this umpire. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I guess that, that, you were you were annotating. Angle. Sorry, Sammy. Go ahead. Yeah, that other angle. Uh, I changed my mind on that. <laughs> good, DJ. <laughs> You were, you were annotating there for a second, um, just kind of showcasing here this umpire gets in a good position um, that he was taking a little bit more lateral movement into the working area um, before John brought up th this. That wasn't necessarily a good position for a two-man, which 100% agree. Um, the only thing I have is feel free to, to walk literally parallel to that grass line. Um, again, I think this umpire does a great job getting in the correct position, making the correct call, using proper use of eyes. Um, but I feel like he takes lateral steps towards the working area, which takes him inadvertently away from the physical play itself. Whereas if he would have rather just taken steps down the cutout, it would have been an even better position uh, to see because uh, on that reverse angle, it does actually show that plays a little bit closer uh, to a miss uh, than maybe we would actually think. Yep. And DJ, yeah, I'm going to one. Yeah, oh. go ahead. Uh, is that Rich? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say he's he's using a little bit of that old mechanic that we were taught is following that ball in is where he's working. So that's just something we're going to have to unlearn and, and start working into. Yep. Honestly, I still say follow the ball in, just yeah. follow it at an angle rather than a step in and moving with the ball. Yep. Carefully. Just follow yep. it at an angle into the base still. You yep. got to keep your head on a swivel. Chad mentioned earlier about getting pegged in the back of the head. All those things still apply. Yes. Yep. 
in this next clip on the big diamond, I think will help illustrate all those points here. So here you get a two man look probably at the starting position here by this umpire. So when we talk about initial starting position in a two umpire system, this is okay. But in a multi-member crew, remember, we can be back towards the grass line and see here. Now, this is the 90-foot diamond at the Junior League World Series. Let's take a look here. We've already kind of discussed initial starting position, but let's take those concepts that we were just talking about moving down the grass line. Watch what this umpire does here on this steel play. Remember how we were always used to talk to step up and then around and then back and swing around with the throw? Like, the question becomes, especially in a two-man and even in a four-man or multi-member crew, like, why in the world would we step up towards the plate only to have to go back towards second base? Like, we, that completely uh, – that's more than negative steps there. That completely takes us out of a good look. And initial starting position here, what would you tell me about the initial starting position of this umpire? It's what? He's way too close to the mound. Yeah. He's a mile from second base. Okay. Now, remember what this umpire has done in this one. This is what DJ and Rich were both uh, talking about here. So I'll feed off of what exactly they said. Remember, he stepped up and then started to swing back around. Instead of making that movement, he should go straight to the grass line and then down parallel to that grass line. So step right down through the grass line here. And the replay angle, I think we'll go ahead and expose you uh, and, and show you why exactly we want to go ahead and do that. Um, so let me go ahead and continue to play it on through here. You can kind of see here that this, this kid does a pretty good job of trying to avoid the tag, right? Like, he, he may have gotten in. He thinks he does. Look at the kid's face. <laughs> <laughs> so, but here's what we're saying, all right? So, instead of giving yourself this look that would basically be down through the cutout, what we want to do is get this look right here. Think about if you're on the grass line as I go ahead and continue to go through this one. If you're right on the grass line, like toes or heels, right on the grass line, look at the look that you have. You see all parts of the base, and you may have a better look as to whether or not this tag was applied before his kid, this kid reaches his foot back around. The other thing, too, is remember here, um, when we talk about the wedge, we want to take the outstretched arm of the fielder and go straight back and find the umpire. Well, we get that on the, on, the big, on the smaller diamonds, right? We would be right through there. But again, the wedge is 360, and it's also right through here. So again, if we want to work through the grass line in this case, um, that then gets us to a spot. If, you, if I go ahead and rewind it here a little bit, uh, that gets us to a spot, as you see here, where that wedge is going to develop right for us along that grass line. Does that make sense? The only the only yeah. issue I see with there is if you're too if you're too close to the grass line, the kid's upper the runner's upper body is going to hinder your vision if the tag was actually made or not. Yeah, and that just allows you. Those are your quiet steps that allow you to go ahead and, and adjust with the play. Um, so it's it's not, mm -hmm. and that's a great point, Chad. It's it's not a predetermined spot that you always take. It's a vicinity here that allows us then to take a step or two and thus get the best angle possible. So we still have to continue uh, to adjust over and over. Yeah. All right. Keep the problem I had, like with my with my um, with the last league I was come from, I come from, my umpires, my especially my new newer ones, they would when they would play the bases, they would. One thing I had to I had to tell them a lot is that they would want to focus on the runners and not the ball, and then they would lose where the ball was. Yep. 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 All right, move on here then to take a look at. Um, yeah, go ahead. Hey, uh, Mike posted a question in the chat. There, do you put yourself at risk of being in path uh, of a bad throw? Um, yeah. I mean, just as no more or no less, in my opinion, than we did 10 years ago when we lined up, you know, parallel to the mound, um, like the guy in the, in the junior clip there. Um, it, it's one of those things where as you're moving in, your body is moving towards second base, but you still have to have your head on a swivel and watch that ball come in. Um, you might need to hit the deck you, just like you would. I, I, I don't think it's going to be any more, any less of a risk uh, than, where, than where we were two-man mechanics uh, 10 years ago or, or anything like that. Um, definitely keep your head on a swivel, though, and be, and be watching where, where the ball is coming from. Um, 
while moving lower body and legs and quiet steps into the vicinity of second base, I figured the, the most popular question would honestly be, do we put ourselves in risk of getting in the runner's way? Um, and as long as we're staying on the edge of that grass line there as we're moving into second base, the most likely path in this clip right here shows a perfect example. A good runner, keyword a good, uh, is going to be sliding to the outside of the bag. So we should have some, we should have some space there. But really good question, Mike, um, and a really good avenue to ask that question to using the chat. Thank you. The risk yeah. is always going to be there. Yeah, remember, we've got to see all parts of the base here. The throw's coming from the inside, so the runner is going to slide to the outside, and that's why that spot like down that grass line is kind of where we want to try and aim for. All right, last segment here before we go ahead and head on for the weekend. Uh, wedge plays at second base from the outfield. Okay. So this is a little bit better look here. These are obviously some pro umpires here at what they're doing. Remember our steps. We want to be right behind the fielder. Guess where our umpire's at. So initial starting position, all good here. Uh, what do you notice about this initial starting position that's different from the other umpires in the previous clips? It's what? A lot closer. A lot closer, right? Yeah. And this allows us in a greater viewing. He's already in the dirt. Yep. yep. You got it. Now, these are quiet steps, all right? You might see the difference here, and we'll, we'll kind of see some of these examples through here. These, these are quiet steps, not exactly what we saw in the previous slip, clips where we were moving into position. Here, we're already in position. Now we're just basically finding the best look possible, all right? And it'll continue on through here in slow motion for us here. Look at these quiet steps along the arc, right? He just continues to circle along the arc. Boom, great spot for it. Another really good look here. See how he moves along those arc and those quiet spots, I, his quiet steps. I think you can see here that his head is still, even though he's moving. Right? If you think about those cameras that are on like the NFL when they're running up and down, the camera's still, but the cameraman's obviously moving. That's exactly what we're doing. So our head is still, but we just continue to find that wedge, that best look possible right here. So I think our fundamentals are great here. Um, in terms of the wedge, initial starting position is good. Do you have anything for me on style and form in this clip? I love the quiet steps, too. Yep. <laughs> that, that made the play. That made that whole play. You got it. Dan, you see why they're pros, that's, that's, that's for sure. Yeah. So that gives us a really good look here at um, – That's good. Yep. You know, just a beautiful usage of the arc. Everybody can kind of see, hopefully, um, through here just – how he steps along those arc, that arc to continue to get that look right into yep. there. That, that's Fantastic awesome. Job. Probably clean up the safe mechanic a little bit, but do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. You, know, you can I, make whatever mechanic you want. Yeah, right. Yeah, you, you get, you, from where you start to where you get, you, you, that, I'm good with it. <sighs> you, you can stand on your head and call him safe. Yep. <laughs> yep, you got it. And like I, I was, I was talking to to DJ a little bit about this earlier too. And and that is like, you know, yeah, that's a pro umpire, and we've showed a lot of little league umpires on here. The only difference, honestly, between us and pro umpires is the number of reps. Like they 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 see, and obviously the quality of baseball is a little bit different of a story too. But I guess my thing is like, you know, if we can think about things and put ourselves mentally in those reps as we're working games, like at the end of the day, we're going to be just as good as those guys as well. The only thing that, that separates us is they get so many more live reps, which I think is really important for us um, to, to just continually mentally rep things as we go through things. Now, last concept here in this one, this is the idea of, of rimming or slipping. So here we have a, a, a ball out in the center field, and you see here that we got a potential play at the plate. So our shortstop lines, off for the, lines up for the cutoff, and then boom, he cuts it off, and now guess what? We're going to try and get the batter runner at second base, which is why – when we're U2, we can't really just stop and spectate, okay? Obviously, pivot, chest the ball. We do not need to be in the working area because think about it. If we're in the working area on this clip and Michael Julian does a good job here, our second base on part, not getting in the middle, he'd be right in the thick of things on this. And he would literally have to take this play like over his shoulder, potentially be in the way, whatever the case may be. So great job staying on the outside. But remember here, when we rim and slide, when the ball clears us, where should Michael have gone here? He should have went behind the, the middle of the field. Fielder. Yeah, back in the middle of the field, right. Right to behind the next fielder, all right? And um, boom, he ends up finding himself in an okay spot, 
But again, that other spot that we want to be in is kind of right back through here to look down through that wedge. So that concept of rimming and slipping, um, as we talked about, as this throw clears you, yes, chest the ball, but as it clears you right here, when the ball's in flight, our eyes should be on it, our chest should be square, and we should start to move then towards the back side of the second base, like you guys said, back to the middle, so that we're in good luck here. Pretty good timing on that one to confirm firm and secure possession too. So good job by him for that timing. All righty, the next clip is just a, a really great clip of another umpire doing it good and doing it really well. So I'll go ahead and, and stop it there. Um, any questions for me here before we go ahead and head on about the day for anybody? I, I, I do have a question about this, like with the securement. Yes. I had a question. I had a question posed in one of my umpire groups on Facebook. I wanted to get your guys' opinion on it. They said a runner, a runner was running towards second, and the fielder gets the, he gets the ball, and he tags the runner with the ball in his bare hand held up against it. He's actually tagged with the glove, but he had the ball held up against the back of the glove. Now, Edward, the question was, would that be considered a, a legal securement tag? So he, he tags him with one hand and the ball's in the other hand? Is that what you're saying? Well, he held, the, he held the ball touching the back of the glove, the, out, the back of the outside of the glove, and tagged the runner with the glove. So – it's hard to illustrate. I can't really yeah. illustrate while I'm driving, but I got he, had, he had the, when he, when he tagged the runner, he had the glove up against the runner and the ball in his, in his bare hand held up against the back of the glove. I got you. What do you guys think? Hey, I want to take it. He's done. Didn't tag him with the ball. I mean, I I, I got an out there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to make uh, – in, in order for me to call him safe, the ball's uh, like got to be – like he's got to be tagging with this hand. The ball's probably got to be in this one. Like, like here's a tag, here's the ball. That ain't happening. If I got one of these, yeah. that's probably good enough for me. So, yep. yeah, I'm, I'm probably banging that firm and secure. Yeah, because I mean, I, like I said, I mean, like I said, it's really no different than him tagging him with the glove with the ball in it, in the glove. I said, and that's what I told him. I said, as long as the ball actually has contact with the glove when he made, when he made the tag, I'm calling it out. Yep, yep, you got it. And that's that's again proper use of eyes, and again good timing and everything else. It's all from the eyes instead of pointing and then banging the kid out. Point or look. Confirm, firm, and secure, nod, and then bang the kid out. Okay, so that, that's that's uh, kind of the, the deal there. Just confirm and firm and secure with your eyes rather than the point. All right. Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. Um, I'll hang on here. i got a couple more minutes for uh, questions and whatnot, so I'll hang on for a, a couple more minutes. Other than that, guys, have a great weekend. Probably be on again next week, so look for another message out there for you. Thanks for uh, helping me finish out the door here on, uh, on positioning at second base. Um, and other than that, guys, we'll see you next week. Thanks for being here. I'll hold on for any further questions.